First Peter chapter 2, verse 1 through 5. Father, we ask for your heavy anointing on this word. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Starting at verse 1. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speaking, as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. If so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious, to whom coming as unto a lively stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, when we are to desire that sincere word we are we are to desire to to grow and to be for real for God God knows the heart man judges the outward appearance but God judges the heart and you know sometimes we as the body of Christ can be the hardest on people i mean it is sad to see born-again Christians, lamb-blasting people in government offices and, and putting them down and talking about them like they're dirt under their feet or neighbors that won't even talk to each other or church members that you've got the, the Hatfields and the McCoys and they stay on that side and the McCoys stay on that side and they look each other up and down. I mean, God doesn't want that. This whole thing is supposed to be based on love, correct? So what is all that? You really think that pleases God? Do you really think God is on either one of your sides? No. No, that, that grieves his heart to see his own children at odds with each other. Well, anyway, listen, we need to not be full of malicious words. We need to not be full of our guile and our nasty attitudes and the hypocrisies. It's, oh, girl, that dress looks, looks good on you. And then get behind her back. Girl, did you see that sorry wig on that head? You really think that makes God feel good? I don't think so. Oh, girl. And it sure doesn't edify the body. I mean, I may not like the way my feet look. I may not like the way my, my toenails look or the way my, uh, the length of my neck or, you know, how we pick it ourselves. But, or the size of my body. But guess what? It's my body. And I'm going to take very good care of the body God gave me. Why can't we have the same attitude towards the body of Christ? We may not like the way this one looks or the way that one talks or the way she dresses or, or the way he smells. But we're all part of the same body, the body of Christ. Amen. We are to desire the sincere word of the Lord. You ever get that? urge where you just have to have that vanilla ice cream or that or that strawberry pudding or whatever you get that craving for. Do you know we should crave the word of God? Do you know that when we begin to partake of God's word and read that Bible, we not only get to know our Father's heart, but we also through the word, get to see our own. Our own ways become exposed to us, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And it's not for condemnation. It's so that we can grow. It's for our benefit. 
When you know that God is good, when you have experienced him, when you know that God is on your side, he's on my side, he's there for you and me. There is no big I, no little you in his mathematics. As far as he's concerned, we are all equal, though some of you would like to push some down under your feet. We are all equal. And some of you are guilty of deitizing the leaders and the saints and, and, and those that have money and degrees. You deitize them. God never wanted that. That's called partiality. That means you lift up some and you put down others. That is not God's way. Amen? Am I right or wrong? All right. Now. We're almost done. When we look at the lively stone, when we look at Jesus and how precious he is and him being the chief cornerstone, do you know that he should be our foundation for everything we do? That when we speak, and the Bible talks about giving spiritual sacrifices, do you know what that means? That's like if someone gets on your last nerve, and they will because they're human, and so are you. The things you might want to say to them, you know why you won't say them? You will zip that lip. That is called a spiritual sacrifice. You may feel as if you have the right to tell them off. You may feel as if you have the right to blow them off in public and put them in their place, whatever place you think that is. But guess what? If you are really taken in by the sweetness, the, the beauty of God, his graciousness, you will offer up spiritual sacrifices of shutting that mouth. You will offer up spiritual sacrifices of loving instead of resenting and hating. You will offer up spiritual sacrifices of forgiveness. Ooh, am I right? Okay. So we have to want God and love him so much that we are willing to put our rights aside. Kick it to the curb, baby. Your rights don't add up to a hill of beans when it comes to God's righteousness. So offer up those spiritual sacrifices. The more you give, the more it shall be given to you. And I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about mercy Love, understanding, patience, long-suffering, kindness, sweetness, humility. Come on. You're not Jesus, Junior. And you're definitely not Jesus. So let's stop trying to be so hard on each other. And remember, we are all a work in progress. Amen. God bless you. Ask God for those of you who are having a difficult time getting along with others or are having a difficult time dealing with um, other people's imperfections and not quite recognizing your own. Ask God to open your eyes and help you see not only yourself, and the flaws that you have to deal with. But ask God to give you a high level of compassion and understanding for those issues in other people or those idiosyncrasies that get on your last nerve. Because where there's understanding, there's always way more patience. When you understand that a, that a person is not 
uh, approachable or they're not warm and, and, and cozy with you because they have been hurt as a child and they have been taught not to trust because all the people that should have been there for them abused them, it makes it easier for you to understand. Do you hear me? Okay, so we have to really endeavor, we have to strive to love. And sometimes it doesn't come natural. So we have to ask God to give us a little extra dose of his love because ours is never sufficient. Trust me. Okay? God bless you. And do me another favor. Ask God to reveal himself to you so that this is not just a blank walk of faith where you're trying to believe in this great big monster called God that sits on this throne that you consider is only there for judgment and help you understand his love. Ask God to help you do this because once you understand his heart, his love and who he really is, Oh my goodness, you will find yourself being the last to pass judgment on anyone else. You will find yourself giving people so many more chances because you realize compared to his holiness, what he has had to put up with, just dealing with you. And you won't be so quick to snap. Amen. God bless you as we all grow together. It is definitely an adventurous journey now, isn't it? Father, we ask you right now to bless us. Bless us to grow in your graces and the fruits of your Holy Spirit and all your righteousness, characteristics, and your love. And we thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in our lives as you draw us together as a body of Christ in unity. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. You can place prayer requests, comments, questions, doubts, um, confessions, whatever. They will all be very much confidential if you desire. God bless you here. Amen. See you next week.